Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK and this is Fluid Ninja Live. Version 1.0 is out and I would like to demonstrate two levels added. The first one is Niagara Tests. I'm loading the level, going full screen and going to the first container. What we could see here is a very basic fluid simulation setup right now showing the simulation density and I'm drawing with my mouse cursor and I'm quitting the gameplay for a second selecting this gray letter N on the level this is the preset manager and I'm just switching it on what I'm going to do is to switch uh, to visualize simulation buffers so this is what I'm doing right now drawing here and if I change this density buffer to velocity, for example, I could visualize uh, these directional vectors. Red is for horizontal and green is for vertical. I could switch on to pressure or divergence. But the thing is that these buffers could be exposed for Niagara and used to drive particle systems. So um, I'm selecting this already placed Niagara system and um, setting it visible starting the game and starting to draw here in the area as you could see this is a very basic two-dimensional grid setup and it's picking up the velocity buffer so uh, just to visualize it here's the velocity and it's telling the particle field the direction of particle movement so that is the basic concept. And this concept could be extended by combining various buffers to drive particle systems. I'm switching off the preset manager and moving on to the next particle system. This one is combining a density and a velocity buffer. As you could see, we have already placed an object in the area and uh, we have some material, output material applied. I'm removing this red spear for a while and starting to draw. And the concept is that particle opacity is masked with simulation density. So it's not like a grid of particles all around the place, like in the previous case, uh, but it's more like a, a masked mass of particles and I'm also driving uh, particle acceleration with this simulation velocity field. Um, the same thing could be said about this setup on stage 3 uh, but the point is that right now I'm using the density to somehow kick particles upwards like um, giving them uh, a burst and uh, perpendicular to the simulation plane. Yeah, um, let me possess this pawn, probably by using Ninja Live Utilities. Um, remove this sphere and walk into this puddle. Ah, yeah, as you could see, it's not just a, a two-dimensional advection that is going on here, but particles are pushed perpendicular to the simulation plane as well. Uh, and there is one more thing here. Um, we are using a persistent brush to draw in the area. So it's like um, a very persistent long living trails. If I'm drawing with my mouse cursor, you could see that it's accumulating in the simulation density buffer. Uh, creating a smoke-like phenomena and on the last stage <laughs> we have a, a very simple setup in this case controlling uh, the vertical scale of these cubes Niagara emitted mesh particles by simulation density mm, let me quit the poem and walk along the level once more so here we go. It is a pure simulation density used to scale particles. 
here we have density and velocity combined. Same here, but in this case density is also pushing particles upwards. And in this setup is a pure two-dimensional grid, velocity, density combined. So surely that's the case. That's how uh, Niagara could be driven by real-time fluid simulation. And these are the first tests. In the future I'm planning to do um, more features. Let's move on to the second level I would like to demonstrate. And uh, this is level 2B, critical settings. And it features two stages. One, please compare these three simulation setups. As you could see, uh, the simulation on the left is very crude. We had the red ball moves. We have some uh, mm, emission, but the gas, the smoke moves vertically, uh, almost without turbulence. And here on the right, we have a very nice detailed flow structure. So what is the difference? Uh, the difference is the number of pressure iterations. If I'm selecting one of these containers, say the middle one, and going to the details panel and selecting the Ninja Live component, I have this uh, parameter group called Live Performance. And here, the third option is Maximum Pressure Iterations. It is set to 5. If I'm loading in the Help Blueprint, and going to this fluid simulation data flow chart, uh, we could see that uh, Ninja Live is working like a, a feedback loop, density and velocity coupled. And we have like a, a sub loop, a sub cycle in this loop. This is what we call the pressure iteration. And the number of iterations really matters because it has a strong impact on performance. More iterations means more uh, pressure on the GPU. And uh, in the same time, more iterations mean more details in the fluid simulation. So it is like a trade-off situation. And as I was experimenting with Fluid Ninja Live, I came up with the number five. It looks like a good compromise between uh, the quality of the fluid simulation and uh, GPU load. So uh, have a look at this stage two. Moving on to stage three, uh, it is going to look ugly. And it looks ugly because parameters are overdriven. And it is right now uh, in version 1.0 that I, I have added a feature which is representing overdriven parameters with red color on the user interface. So I'm switching on the preset manager, starting the thing again. And as you could see this uh, yellow rectangle, the first container is selected. And looking at the preset manager on the left, well, we could see that the drag parameter is driven to the maximum and offset is also driven to the maximum and both are red. By the way, a tooltip feature is added, so if you hover with your mouse, basically the tooltips are telling you what uh, the given parameter is for and what is the normal range for that parameter. But the thing is uh, that you should be careful, because um, it is possible to overdrive parameters. And the reason for this is that in some cases it might look cool, and I wanted to let users to overdrive parameters. But again, uh, you have to be careful, and by having uh, a careful look at the parameter setup, mm, you could avoid these uh, visual artifacts. So, um, so much about parameter overdrive. Uh, these were the two new levels added compared to the beta version. And the documentation is complete, and we have, um, expose render targets features it's for exporting render targets on disk uh, a few small bug fixes that's the thing about live 
and thank you for your attention and see you next time.